On the 6th of April, OpenAI announced DALI 2, a text-to-image generator that can draw anything you can imagine. The results DALI 2 creates are original and drawn in the style of your choosing. Cartoon, photorealistic, watercolor, or anything you can describe. AI-generated art isn't new. In 2018, AI artwork sold for $432,000. The problem is, though, most of it's been pretty terrible. The major breakthrough here is that images produced by DALI 2 look good often as good, if not better, than what an artist could produce, and are generated in only 10 seconds. With this capability, just a description and a click away for anyone on the internet to access, we have to ask ourselves, is art dead? And is society close behind it? People have been saying for a long time that robots with AI will handle all the hard manual labor that humans don't want to do so that we can focus just on the more creative tasks in the future. But it seems that AI also does a better job of the creative stuff. So it won't be long, maybe until we see art, clips, short videos, eventually maybe even full movies generated by AI. Honestly, the level to which DALI 2 can deliver already the insanely high quality images, seemingly without any artistic skill on the part of the user, really caught my attention. I want to explore how DALI 2 actually works, the potential impact it may have on artists, but maybe more importantly, the potential impact it may have on society. DALI 2 was created by OpenAI, an organization with investors like Elon Musk and Peter Thiel, because the potential commercial value of making AI do jobs we don't like, but increasingly jobs we also do like, is absolutely huge. DALI 2 is an updated version of the system that OpenAI debuted early in 2021, simply called DALI. The name here is meant to evoke a mixture of Wally, -E, the animated robot of Pixar movie fame, and play on words for Dali, as in Salvador Dali, the surrealist artist, though increasingly these images look like they could be photographs. The original Dali could render images only in a cartoonish manner, often against a plain background. The new Dali 2 can generate photo quality high resolution images, complete with a complex background, depth of field effects, realistic shadows, shading, and even reflections. While these realistic renderings have been possible with computer rendered images previously, creating them required some serious artistic skill. Here, all a user needs to do is type in a command, photo of Darth Vader as a samurai meditating in the Edo period, and then DALI 2 can generate a photorealistic version on that theme. This new release also includes capabilities like editing or updating existing images or part of an image based on a prompt in a process called inpainting. Let's look at a couple more examples. So what's actually happening here? It's tempting to assume that the AI is just stitching together elements of pre-existing images to make a new image, but that's not what's actually happening. DALI 2 is creating these images from scratch, starting with a set of randomly colored pixels and evolving an image over a number of iterations to produce the final product. DALI 2 makes use of two underlying technologies, GPT-3, which is a language model that uses deep learning to produce human-like text from a prompt. It can read long passages of text and summarize information, understand context, or even be used to understand or respond to human input. Let's jump in and take a look at what the tech can do. So this example is within Wikipedia. So if you've ever seen a long article, you can't really understand or find the information that you need. You can simply have a plugin where you ask the exact question that you want. So in this example, I'm asking why is bread fluffy? And it's searching the data and information in that article and generating an answer to my question and giving me a citation and location that I can jump to. So really summarizing the data, making it really easy for me to find exactly what I want. The second technology is called CLIP. CLIP stands for Contrastive 
cognitive language image pre-training and is a neural network that efficiently learns visual concepts from natural language supervision. Clip is essentially trained on hundreds of millions of images and their associated captions. And Clip's goal is to learn how related any given caption may be to a certain image. DALI 2 essentially takes this process and then runs it in reverse, generating an image that matches well to a given caption. DALI 2 is shown to be particularly good at understanding relationships between objects or actions. So when you go to type in an astronaut riding a horse on the moon, it understands what that should look like in a scene. It also has some additional aesthetic training that helps it to compose an image in a way that we define as artistically pleasing. DALI 2 evolves the images that it produces out of a starting point of a picture of random noise in a process called diffusion. Diffusion or diffusion models are a thermodynamics inspired invention that have grown significantly in popularity in the AI community in the past few years. Diffusion models are trained to generate data by looking at images that have been slowly turned into random noise and learning how to reverse that gradual noising process to turn it back into an image, starting with a random series of pixels and moving towards a pattern with increasing levels of detail, almost like zooming into a fractal, adding increasing detail on each successive iteration. But I think the obvious question here is why stop there. There is no reason to call it quits at just image generation. Imagine an entire film being created by this technology. With GPT-3 drafting the script and DALI-2 creating the storyboard, AI generated scenes, voices, sound, script and music, all is within the realm of possibility within the coming years. Not only is this potentially troubling for lower profile skilled artists out there that might no longer be able to win small art commissions, but what does this actually mean for art as a whole? We're used to AI operating, say in the financial sector or within science to fit data to our new understanding or in something like Facebook to manipulate democracy. But we've always held art as special, as something that makes us us. This starts to call into question how capable we really are. Even the best artist is doing something analogous to DALI, drawing from past experiences, the data sets that they were trained on, adapting them and making it their own, looking to compose an image in a way that we consider artistically pleasing. DALI too has managed to make deterministic an ability we didn't think possible the power of imagination, to visualize something never seen before out of the seed of an idea and to do it in a visually pleasing way in a fraction of the time that it takes us. Artistic and imaginative activities are so valued because they are difficult, because not everyone can actually do them and because they show us something that's new and something that's stimulating, that gives us a small dopamine hit, a wow moment. If these images become commonplace, easily scattered across the internet, constantly in your newsfeed, what happens? Just like the instant access of the internet has dulled our attention spans and kept us hungry for the next novel thing, will this devalue our own imaginations because we can create without consequence or without effort? There's also here a deeper societal question. Are we actually ready for this technology as a species? In an age of misinformation, what I think requires the most consideration is how this technology will affect the media landscape. This actually probably terrifies me more than I care to admit. Not the fact that we can make thumbnails, just the fact that the amount of artificial intelligence that we have evolved over the past few years seems to put us in a position of almost exponentially scaling capability. This software could be used just as easily to generate fake images, to be used in propaganda or disinformation or other explicit images. OpenAI has said that it takes steps to limit the software capabilities in this area, first and foremost by trying to remove such images from the AI's training data, but also by applying rule-based filters and human content reviews to the images that the AI generates. OpenAI is also trying to carefully control the release of DALI 2, which it describes as currently just a research project and not a commercial product. It's sharing the software only with what it describes as a select and screened group of beta testers. But in the past, we've seen OpenAI's breakthroughs based on natural language processing have often found their way into commercial products within about 18 months. Part of this strategy, amid images of astronaut cowboys and koalas being shared on social media sites, you'll notice is a lack of people's faces. As part of OpenAI's red team process, an expert panel that looks for ways things can go wrong before the product's public distribution, AI researchers found that DALI 2's depiction of people can be inherently biased. 
Early tests by OpenAI have shown that DALI 2 leans towards generating images of white men by default, overly sexualizes images of women, and reinforces stereotypes. The DALI 2 training process is more likely to label the faces of men as executives or doctors than those of women, and eight out of eight attempts to generate images with words like a man sitting in a prison cell or a photo of an angry man generated images of men of color. These training outcomes, it's important to reflect, are not the fault of the AI. They represent an unpleasant reflection of the bias present in our society. DALI 2 was trained using a combination of photos scraped from the internet and acquired from licensed sources, according to the documentation authored by OpenAI ethics and policy researchers. OpenAI did make efforts to mitigate toxicity or the spread of disinformation, applying text filters to the image generator and removing some key words that were explicit or gory. But naturally the biases we see in the world will be present in the images we use inevitably as training datasets. Many of the expert panel have recommended that OpenAI release DALI 2 without the ability to generate faces at all, in order to avoid the potential that this technology might be misused. In training an AI, we are teaching it about our world. If we aren't careful, we'll imprint the imperfections of our society into the brain of that AI. You're only as good as the examples that you learn from, which is true both for people as well as for artificial intelligence. But I want to know what you think. Is this a revolution or are there dangers here that really we should be careful not to ignore? Leave me a comment down below. We are definitely standing, in my opinion, more visibly than we ever have before at the precipice of a generation of technologies that can change the landscape of the world faster than we've ever seen in a way that we fundamentally at the moment don't understand. If you like this video, leave a like to help me fight the other AI that rules our lives, the YouTube algorithm. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.